Hey everybody, it's Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat and I'm talking today with Ania. Hello. Hi, thanks for having me. So for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Yes, so my name is Ania. I'm a Microsoft MVP in Power Apps. I live in Germany and uh, what I do is, yeah, Power Platform all day long. Are you, uh, you know, work for yourself, independent? You work for a company? I work for uh, Nova Capta. Nova Capta is a consulting company in based in Germany, and our headquarters is in Cologne as well. But we have offices throughout the Germany and Switzerland as well. So yeah, so we do all Microsoft stuff from Modern Work, uh, Teams, and we also have our business unit power platform, and that's where I'm in. Well, I know that you've uh, you've done some of these interviews before. I always like though to uh, to get some background. Like, what was your path to becoming an MVP? People always, I, I love the origin story. Obviously, there are patterns, there are behaviors that are common across MVPs. But I love to get that perspective. So, what was your story there? How did you hear about the program? How did you get started? Well, I started creating content around three years ago. Uh, it's, it, it was in the middle of a pandemic. So if you see one of my earliest videos, you will see that I have such long hair, like much more <laughs> longer beard than now because yep. everything was closed. Yep. And uh, I, I always enjoyed sharing my knowledge. I was before in the, in the user adoption domain as well, talking to clients, talking to people and showing them how to use this, these new technologies that we, we sell them or the services we sell them. So uh, I always enjoyed that and I started doing content. So yeah, and, and that grew and grew. And uh, I saw that there was also a recognition from Microsoft called the Microsoft MVP program. And I said, okay, if I continue doing this and uh, showing my passion and helping people, then someday maybe someone who is an MVP uh, will see that, will notice it and maybe uh, nominate me. And that happened actually the first time last year, uh, but I did not get into the program last year. So I said, okay, let's continue the way I was doing it before. Nothing changed. And then the second time it uh, was successful and I was uh, awarded this year in March. So it's now a couple of months that I've become an MVP. Well, I have to ask though, uh, it, because that little problem of getting someone's attention, did you do anything? Uh, did you connect with people? I mean, how did that connection happen? Or did, was it just fate? Somebody came across your content and reached out? Um, I don't think that any expert in the domain where you share or where you create content will it's at least it's very difficult to be noticed if you uh, if you're not like uh Scoduro or someone who is like very famous out there and then you 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 are easy to be noticed right so that for for starters i would suggest or what i did is i started my network with mvp so i extended my network with mvps so when i was posting stuff they were automatically looking at it, no? like someone liking, someone just looking at them. And uh, yeah, and it's so that it happened that uh, Norm Young, I don't know if you know him. I, very uh, he is a guest on my podcast once a month and he's a good yeah. friend. Yeah, yeah. It's a, exactly. What a great guy, right? Yep. So he he noticed my, my content a while back and then he asked me if I was nominated. And then, yeah, so, so it, that's how it uh, happened. So networking is a pretty important uh, part of becoming an MVP. That's one of those things that I don't, I mean, I, I provide that advice all the time is like, if you, you know, one, um, I always give advice, like, don't just reach out and do like a LinkedIn empty connection with no note. I mean, if you personalize it and the ones that are generic, like I'm building my network and I would love to add you like, don't, don't do that. Uh, if, if there's a reason for connecting. Like when I reached out, I think when I connected to you, it's like you became an MVP and I reached out and said something to effect of, hey, I love connecting with, always happy to connect with fellow MVPs, you know, love to have you come and participate in this interview. Like that, that's something that is, you know, it's a unique way to approach another MVP. But if you read somebody's content, if you see their video and go in and comment on it, if you bring value to that discussion that's a great way to i guess in like instagram world it's it's the sliding into their dms <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, at, if you do that, uh, you sh you should be honest. No, what's the purpose of this connection? Not not just uh, because I, I get so many invitations about hey, I, I like being in the network of Power Platform, and then it ends up that it's either a service or a recruiter. So right. I, I I remove them immediately after the right. first mess the second message done in that time. So be honest, extend your network. I think uh, everybody who's an MVP or not or who is in this domain where we are uh, uh, today. Um, it's it's looking to extend their network as well, and they want to help people or to show what they are creating, what they are uh, doing, and uh, so they will be happy to have you in their connect in their network, right? But just don't uh, be uh, like lying about the purpose of this connection. Right. So well, then, I, very important. right. There's nothing wrong with going through and saying, "Hey, look, these are folks that I regularly review their content, or yeah. uh, they're in my region, or whatever it is." The connection there. And to go and expand your network, I mean, yeah, there, there's that reason behind this, why we use those tools and platforms for those connections. Exactly. But again, have a conversation. Don't just be an yeah. empty I mean, vessel. I, mean, I don't have also anything against like uh, someone who's selling a service or who's a recruiter, because there are people who say, hey, I'm a recruiter. I want to extend my not network because... If you have like a, the need in a couple of months or years to change your your your, your work, then you can come at me, or maybe we can right. have a discussion. But be honest; that's that's the point. No, it's not about what you're doing, but the, the honesty behind it. Well, as far as uh, technology, like, what are you actively writing about? What are you passionate about right now? Is there anything new that's been released that you're, or are you? Is there nothing new that you're excited about, but you're just going with the 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 basics of the the platform so what are you currently writing and talking about so i i don't usually jump into these uh, hype trains like when copilot came out and my, my linkedin was flooded with copilot content so i thought okay they're so there's so much content there and there are well, people it's be, who are it's because they're all content. experts they're instantly exactly. experts in here right exactly in two days everyone is an expert so and they they do it well i cannot do it that, as good as they do so i say okay i'm not going to do that and what I do in my daily uh, job is that I solve problems in the Power Platform. This can be in Power Apps Canvas, in Power Automate, or Microsoft Power BI. So when I solve these problems, I'm not, I don't know everything. So myself, I also go search for solutions or for answers or of some uh, uh, topics that I encounter. And if I don't find something easily, like first time Googling, find the whole solution, then I will have to pick the the cherry picking, right, it's from from different blogs and videos, and put the solution together. So if that's something that I see, okay, this could help someone else as well, I put a video together about that use case. So it's more like use cases and sometimes like updates. So today came another video out uh, for the new update in Power Apps Canvas about the icons that you can have in buttons. Mm -hmm. So stuff like that, right? So I think that that's uh, that's my niche, as as I can call as I call it. Do you worry about, or do you think about, I mean, so you kind of answered the question about like not following the hype train. Um, it, Cause I had a conversation with somebody that, that provided advice. We we're talking about websites, blogs before this, we started recording um, it, it, where the advice was to, you know, concentrate on those where there's, you know, certain keyword traffic general out in the internet, mm -hmm. like hot topics that are out there or really focus on high performing topics on your site. And my response to that is that, yeah, but there's still content that needs to be written for low performing or niche topics. Yeah. How, how do you select what you, do you think about, okay, what's the impact of this video that I'm going to create versus, hey, there's just this question or I, 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 I saw this, I solved this problem. I just need to get the content out there. Do you think about, well, I'm not going to do that because it's not going to get that many views. No, it's it's definitely the second one. Otherwise, I would have uh, completely different content on my channel. So you see only use cases that I've encountered. And when, I, as I said, when when I find a solution to something, it's like like a light bulb going on, and then I say, okay, this is something cool that can be probably useful to someone else as well, right? So, uh, and also I think that the topics that I showcase are also more accessible. To, to the general um, um, audience, because almost, I, as I said, Power BI, Power Apps, Power, uh, Power Automate, those are also not that um, expensive or like some fancy uh, licensing concept behind them. 
where where there is not that many people looking at them. So I, I know that the general Power Platform uh, citizen developer out there will have SharePoint, you will have Power Apps Canvas trying, or they're, they're trying to do something with Power Automate. So I know there's a wide uh, range of people who are working with these tools. And I hope that they, I hope it sounds wrong, but I hope that they have the same problems that I can solve them then. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's interesting. It, I think it goes back to um, like that authenticity issue. It's like, we, we want, you need to write about, do the things that you know that you enjoy. Otherwise you're not going to be able to maintain, you know, that level. It's, it's uh, I know I write a lot of content and so I don't want anybody to think like, look at my site as an example of what you need to do to become an MVP mm -hmm. uh, because I'm an empty nester. No, you know, my kids are old and gone. Uh, you know, I, I work in the basement. My wife works out of the house. So it's like myself and my dog all day long. Uh, and so I work all the time. I'm writing all the time. And so I'm going to turn into that crazy guy that's alone <laughs> writing in his house. No, but. Um, so you're the opposite of that cut lady or the men, the men version of that that's cut right. lady. The, yeah, the, <laughs> the dog guy, the old, the old dog man. That's right. Um, no, but it's a, but the reason why I'm able to do this stuff is because I found certain patterns or I use templates of the things that I write about, the things that I go and do like you. I mean, I have, there are blog posts that I wrote four or five, six years ago that are still in my top 10, you know, mm -hmm. top 20 yeah. articles every single month. If I want to just go and build that kind of content, like I could do nothing but build that kind of content. My site would probably double in, in, in size, but I wouldn't enjoy doing that. So. Yeah, I know. I'm, yeah. And, as I, and also to, to go back to that uh, high train topic, I don't, you, you said as well, I don't think that I am an expert two days after something that has, has been announced. What, what should I? Oh, that's my, the expectation. Now that you're an MVP, <laughs> you need to be an expert in everything but, two days why later. Should I, uh, why should I lie to, to the audience yeah. uh, who are following me for more than three years now? So, if something was just announced, I go read the Microsoft slides and then I take a video about it. So yeah, I can just post the link on LinkedIn and that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and there's a way to do that, but I think it's like you said, you need to be honest about it and say, Hey, look, I'm just hearing about this, this is what my thoughts on this. You can do that kind of content. Yeah. What, yeah. So what, what's the community activities like? Um, I, I, and I'd love to know too, for your region, how are things different today than it was pre-pandemic? Have things gotten back to where they were from a community standpoint? Um, well, as I said, I started in the pandemic, so I, I don't know how it oh. was before, but um, I have the feeling that even more and more in-person activities are now uh, taking taking place. Uh, but it's uh, like a mixer. I mean, I am invited at a lot of uh, virtual events where I just take part or I present something because it's it's cheaper, it's faster. It's not that uh, it's much more convenient for people who are throughout the world, but uh, they're also doing a lot of in-person activities at the moment. I was at the beginning of the year in, uh, in Hamburg for the Color Cloud. Mm -hmm. That was a very, very interesting uh, event. And uh, yeah, even mo more and more events are popping uh, around, uh, around in Germany, so. Yeah, it's it's a. I, I think we're seeing that globally, where there are larger events that are starting back up, and I think our the numbers are all on the rise. I mean, certainly in the U.S. Um, around the, the power platform, and now there's new. I think globally there are two new fabric conferences, mm -hmm. and the numbers were really big for the first versions of those. Um, but for smaller, like user groups, I think are still struggling and smaller events we did our like we did uh i think 10 years or nine years of in-person like events here locally where i am in utah mm. uh, and had we're growing numbers in fact our our second largest attendee um numbers were in february of 2020 so right before lockdowns and we like doubled our numbers and we were very happy about that and then uh you know we just did this year our first one back in person and we were less than half of what we had in 2020 yeah you know and, and uh and so finding sponsors and all kind of all that's difficult so i think virtual options there's nothing wrong with that um and and do, doing something locally and then having building up 
uh, your your followers, building up a community globally. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. I I love yeah. doing a our our monthly user group. You know, we share it out there, and we've got people from all over the world dropping in on those topics, which is great. Yeah, definitely, you wouldn't be able to do it if everything was in person, right? So right. Well, we did it somehow, but I think uh, tastes have also changed and, you know, technology is moving so quick. It's, uh, I don't know, the, the hard part with that, with technology changing so quickly is what do you focus on? Like, what, what do we individual MVPs go and focus on? Like, I start as a SharePoint MVP. I could talk nothing but SharePoint and have a huge audience at the beginning there. Now you you have to, like as a user group, we cover Power Platform and SharePoint and Teams and Copilot and Loop and occasionally Dynamics questions and sometimes Windows and because it's all in that scope now. And we yeah. still have a smaller audience. Maybe it's because we're not as focused, but I don't know how you're that focused anymore, except as an individual. Yeah, I, I think you you need to now with Copilot uh, answering all the questions. You need more uh, to have to go in in width than in depth sometimes. But yeah, which is I know. What's your thoughts on that? Like uh, to become an MVP, would you say width or depth? Well, <laughs> coming from someone who did not go in that depth on or on any of the content, so I, I was like more in the width, but in a limited width, like as I said, Power Apps, Power Automate, and Power BI content. Um, you can you can go both, I think, because they're out there. When I remember after getting the uh, the reward, the award, I um, had that MVP call with the, all the MVPs from the region that you have, mm -hmm. and they were like some amazing people in the call who were like total experts in PowerShell, one of them. And I follow them since. I am not, I'm not, I am not that familiar with PowerShell. I don't work with that tool, but I, I know it, of course. So I see his content. He's like 100% in deep depth uh, for, uh, for, for PowerShell. So he's also an MVP. So I think you can, you can, you can do both as long as you help people. That's the right. most important. Part. Right. Well, that, that is the key. I mean, that's, that's the big question. People want to know, like to become an MVP, it's like, you're out, you've got to focus. I'd say you have some degree of consistency and whatever your contribution type. And, yeah. and I've always said too, and there, and there are people who become MVPs that have never written a blog that don't create videos that do nothing but answer questions on like Microsoft tech community or, yeah. you know, mm -hmm wherever the 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 space is where they're answering those questions it's just about that visibility if there happens to be another mvp that's within that that community on that forum or there's a microsoft person that's what you need you need the attention of somebody uh, to, to be able to see that but be consistent yeah yeah be consistent be honest and uh yeah try to build your network i think networking is uh key part of that as you said visibility it's deep, it's more it's easier to uh, to have that visibility by creating content and posting on linkedin than for example only doing uh, answering questions in those forums right so well final question for you I, if, if for somebody who might be thinking about like even within your space in the power platform space um so potentially a business applications mvp um, what advice would you give them? Is there any, do you see any gaps or any openings where he's like, I don't know why somebody's not doing this. What advice would you give to somebody who would be interested in pursuing this path? Well, I don't see any co-pilot experts yet out there. So I would say that if you uh, can go and understand Copilot, not only as a the Copilot Studio and how to use it, but also from from maybe from an advisory perspective, right? Mm -hmm. you know, all the governance and security stuff. Well, because that's the, the biggest fear, at least in Germany, because the you know Europe and Germany maybe they think a little bit more uh, conservative about th this stuff, no? Uh, and uh, especially here, those are the only questions that we get. Then they start asking, okay, can it automate me this or can it help me by that? The first question is all the governance, security, and where's my data and so on. So if you can dive into that topic and can answer those questions, I think that's uh, going to have a lot of potential because uh, it's going to have uh, a, a huge audience. No? I mean, Copilot, it's like everything AI related. It's yeah. going to be very asked. Yeah. I think you're seeing more and more uh, Copilot readiness 
workshops and things that are out there. I think you're exactly right. If you go look at the structure of most of those workshops, like half or more of the content is not like, how do you build, you know, a, a proper prompt, you know, the prompt engineering side, like that's the easy part. I mean, it's yeah. not that it's easy, but you know, the easier, uh, <laughs> but you know, half of what they cover is like understanding how to go build an LLM, LLM. How do you train yeah. those? What are the security governance compliance issues around it? How do we secure our content against oversharing kind of all those areas? I mean, you're right. Yeah. It, you could do nothing but focus on that area. How to prepare the data in a company to be able to be found by a compiled and to be processed the right way, right? So being being ready as a company to use Copal at all. We, we haven't started the, uh, yet talking about uh, prompting and prompt engineering and so on. No, that's the last thing. So everything what we need to do before. That's yep. a pretty complex, difficult, and, and, and interesting part as well. And let me just point out that uh, the secret to all of that is that it's the, for those of us that have been in information management systems for our entire careers, uh, it's the same stuff we've been telling you to go and do with your information architecture, security permissions, like all that for the last, for, to, to improve search. It's the yeah. same motion, it's the same thing, yeah. um, but Indexing you do need to understand the nuances, problem. the differences. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's a pretty interesting part of this technology domain that, uh, I don't see any expert. I haven't searched the whole YouTube domain, but I, just, no, I haven't seen anyone popping out. Uh, There's yet. very few. That's right. That stand out. So, yeah. well, and yeah, really appreciate your time today and connecting. I always like to end with ask this question for folks that want to get in touch with you, reach out to you. Where are you most active in social? Where can people find you? So I am on LinkedIn most actively and have uh, all my links there. So you can find my YouTube channel. You can find my blog posts and everything that you need. So follow me on LinkedIn and everything else is to be found there. Of course, we'll have all of his, his information out on the blog, out on YouTube, uh, through social. So you can find it through that as well. And then you can, of course, follow this series out on buckleyplanet.com. And I really appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Have a nice day. 